Peter Cahoon here with Tony Brettringer, Central Laboratory Manager, Roads, Pavement and Geotechnical Engineering with the Roads and Maritime Services. Talking common earthwork tests. So Tony, the California bearing ratio, what are we looking at here? Well, its full name is the California bearing ratio of remoulded road construction materials. And it's a test we use to determine a design parameter for the thickness of road pavements. Okay, humour me here for a second. Before we get into the details, California. Well, the California Bearing Ratio, or CBR, is a penetration test for evaluation of the mechanical strength of road subgrades and base courses. It was developed by the California Department of Transportation in the 1930s. Hence, California. And there's more. The CBR is used for measuring the load bearing capacity for new pathways, road and airstrips, or for soils already under paved areas. The harder the surface, the higher the rating. For example, a CBR of 3 is equivalent to a tilled farmland. A CBR of 5 is turf or moist clay. A CBR of 10 equals moist sand, while a CBR greater than 80 is hard quality crushed rock. Back in the 30s, thousands of tests were conducted on a uniform crushed Californian limestone. And it was this limestone that was designated as having a CBR of 100. All CBRs are now rated against this material. If California limestone, which is our standard for comparison, is deemed to have a CBR of 100, can we get higher than that? It is possible to have a CBR of greater than 100%. This just means that the material you're testing has a higher bearing ratio than the Californian limestone. Mm. So in layperson's terms, the CBR is... CBR is a measure of resistance of material to penetration of a plunger under controlled density and moisture conditions. Gotcha. OK, let's get on to preparation. What do we need to do in particular for this test? Well, firstly, in terms of preparation, it all has to be done in accordance with T105. Beyond that, it's important to remember that it is not necessary or desirable to completely dry the sample. Material containing organic silts and gypsums can undergo drastic changes when dried to constant mass. Well, we cover all the details of preparation to T105 requirements in another chapter. Now, I understand that this test has a connection to another test, namely the Proctor test. What's the story there? There is a connection, and indeed, it's important that material for both the compaction, T111, and CBR tests are prepared at the same time. To that end, sufficient material has to be prepared for both, and the compaction test has to be performed prior. So sufficient material must be prepared for a compaction test which must be done prior to the CBR test. Is this one instance where we must use the T111 compaction test? That's right. And while both tests are conducted on the minus 19 mil portion of the sample, it's important that the percentage of plus 19 mil material in the original sample is calculated and reported. OK, let's get started. So, as I've said, we have to first have completed our compaction maximum dry density to moisture relationship test. From that test, we know the optimum moisture content, or OMC, and maximum dry density, MDD, that the CBR specimen will be compacted at. For specification purposes, CBR samples are compacted at 100% of the maximum dry density from the compaction test. However, CBR testing for investigation purposes can be compacted at either 95% or 100%. OK, so for specification has to be 100%, but for investigation, any required MDD, usually 95% or 100%. Yeah, that's right. Using the optimum moisture content from our compaction test, we adjust the moisture content of our CBR sample to what is called the laboratory moisture ratio, LMR, of 100%, with a tolerance of minus 3% to plus 2%. We do that by adding water to the sample in increments and ensuring that this water is mixed in very well. The sample is then sealed and cured. Now curing will vary and is largely dependent on the amount of clay in the sample. We're talking days here. We are, usually around three, but as I said, this can vary with the amount of clay. OK, we've let our sample cure and we're happy that it's at the LMR of 100% within our accepted tolerance. Prior to compaction, we place a 61mm spacer disc into our mould. 
This spacer is removed prior to soaking, which we'll come to in a minute, and is used to create a space in the mould for surcharges to be placed on the specimen during soaking and testing. So we have to put it in now, but take it out later? Yes, and the face of the specimen that is in contact with the spacer when it's compacted is the face we'll be testing. You mentioned surcharges. The surcharge mass relates to the material in the pavement shoulder, usually the weakest point, and replicates the confining effects of overlying layers. OK, our spacer is in the mould. We add our material and compact it. But the important thing is we achieved the specified laboratory density ratio, LDR, plus or minus 1%. Now, we don't have to guess the amount of specimen we'll need to fill the mould, do we? T105 Appendix A11 shows how to calculate the amount of material required to fill the CBR mould. Dividing this amount by the number of layers gives you the amount per layer. OK, Tone, we've compacted our specimen to the specified LDR. Then we take our specimen in the mould and soak it for the specified period, either four or ten days. But it's not just a matter of dunking it in a bucket, is it? Well, no. We have to take some more measurements first. Before and after soaking, the swell during soaking is determined by measuring the height of the specimen before and after it goes into the water. Yeah, anything we have to be wary of at this point? It's important that the swell gauge is checked to ensure that it hasn't been altered before each measurement. And the same position on the CBR mould is used for these measurements. So take care here. OK, we've taken our swell measurements. Now we soak the specimen. Soaking is used to saturate the material and test at a worst case scenario. For example, material in the bottom of a field over swampy ground. The CBR result is used to calculate the cover requirements. So testing soaked will in fact give us a more conservative result. And we leave it complete with the mould underwater for the specified time. And that could be four to ten days. That's right, depending on whether a four or ten day soak is specified. Well, our four days have passed. Our samples are well and truly soaked. Tony, what's the next step? First is to measure the swell post soaking. Using our swell gauge here. And again, it's really important to ensure it hasn't been altered and we use the same position on the CBR mould for the measurement. And now we leave the specimen to drain before placing it in the CBR machine. 15 minutes is about the usual time. OK, this is where we record the load over penetration data, sometimes by hand or by computer. The CBR machine raises the specimen into the piston, which is attached to a load cell. The load rate is 1, plus or minus 0.2 millimetres per minute. And when it's done, we're not through with our specimen, are we? No. What we do then is extrude the specimen from the mould and break it up to determine the moisture content. We break the specimen in halves vertically, and then the top 30 millimetres is broken off one half. That way we can determine the moisture content from the top 30 millimetres and the full depth. Now, we've been doing a lot of measuring and so on along the way. What are the calculations and determinations we're after now? Well, prior to compaction, we would have determined the laboratory moisture ratio and laboratory density ratio of the specimen prior to compaction. Then we work out the swell of the specimen after soaking by comparing our readings from our swell gauge before and after soaking. And finally, we need to determine the moisture content of the full depth of the specimen and the top 30 millimetres after testing. And all those are recorded on a test sheet. Now, here we have an output from a CBR machine. What are we looking at here, Tone? Well, being the output for the computer, all the calculations have been done for us and we can see a curve that plots penetration against load. Those two plot points, CBR 2.5 and CBR 5, are both shown to be 1% of each other. And as you can see, we have a readout for those with a CBR of 5 and 5, respectively. So not quite California limestone material, but not tilled soil either? No, pretty much what I would have expected for that type of soil sample. So how long would this normally take? This test will typically take around one to two weeks to complete, depending on how long it takes to cure both the proctor and the CBR samples.